All right, let's talk about something every photographer, filmmaker, or content creator has to deal with eventually, and that's storage and backing up their files. Now, uh, external hard drives get expensive, and I felt like back in the past, I was buying drives every couple months, and external SSDs get expensive. And then on top of that, you need backups. Um, obviously, cloud services are useful, but they can be kind of slow and they're expensive. And obviously, managing footage and files across multiple drives gets to be a nightmare. Now, I have a pretty good system in place with my current workflow. I edit on an SSD, transfer that to the NAS, and then that NAS backs up to another NAS. But I'm running out of space. I run out of space every couple of years, and I'm actually about to run out soon, which is good timing for this video because you Green reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out the NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus. And I was like, yeah, I need that. So we're gonna set that up in this video. Quick disclosure, this video is sponsored by Ugreen, but as always, I'll be giving you my honest take. I do get to keep the NAS, but I had to pay for the drives inside it. Um, I will timestamp this video because it's sort of a review slash setup, so you can kind of choose the parts you wanna watch. Let's get into it. If you've never heard of a NAS before, uh, it basically just stands for Network Attached Storage. So basically you're connecting a large external drive to your network and that's gonna let you store, access your files, back up your files without relying on third-party sources like Google Drive or Dropbox. Now the real advantages of the DXP4800 Plus is speed, security, and then multi-user access. I put four 16 terabyte drives in this unit and I'm gonna set it up and show you how it works. So let's check it out. Installing drives in the DXP4800 Plus is pretty straightforward. The drive trays are toolless, so you just pop them out of the chassis, slide the little tab on the bottom of the drive caddy, and then drop your hard drive into it, lock them in place, and then put it back inside the chassis. Now you can also use SATA SSDs, but you'll actually have to use the included screws to screw that in. They won't work toolless because of the size. Now I would personally recommend populating all the drives first when you're building your NAS. That way you can get the right RAID configuration for what you need. Um, you can scale it so you could add drives later if you didn't put all four drives in. But personally, I would just get what you need, fill out the slots, and you're good to go. Now at the bottom of this unit, there's actually access to two NVMe slots. Um, and you could also add extra RAM, which is crazy. This thing's basically like a little mini computer. I did have a couple of old 500 gig NVMe drives lying around, so I decided to put those in as cache drives. And Ugreen also supplies some really thick thermal pads for the NVMe drives to help with heat dissipation. All right, let's talk about specs because this NAS isn't just about storage, it's built for performance. It's got a 12th gen five core Intel processor, and that's powerful enough to handle a bunch of different multi-user access. It's got eight gigs of RAM, it's also upgradable if you want to put more in it. It's got a 10 gig and 2.5 gig ethernet connection on it. Uh, it's super fast of using the 10 gig networking, which I'll show later. It's got an HDMI output if you ever just wanted to connect a monitor directly to it, if you didn't want to have it near your computer and put it somewhere else. Um, it's got multiple USB ports for expansion. It's got a couple of USB 2 ports for peripherals. It's got one USB 3.2 type A for high speed external drives. And on the front IO, um, for easy access, it's also got a USB-C and a USB-A input on it, as well as a built-in SD card reader. And they're saying this unit can take up to 112 terabytes of potential storage, so that'd be four 24 terabyte drives and two eight terabyte M.2 drives. So that'd be the dream, but that is kind of expensive. Uh, that's why I only went with four 16 terabyte drives. I feel like that's kind of the sweet spot for storage capacity uh, to price, giving me 64 terabytes, and that should last around two to two and a half years. But uh, yeah, let's get into the setup. Open a web browser and type find.ugnas.com and it should find your unit if it's connected correctly. Then you can give it a name and you also have to create your main account. Then it'll ask you to create a Ugreen Cloud account so you'll be able to access the NAS from anywhere. Next is to choose if you want updates to the UG OS and some apps installed. I chose automatically, then it installs everything, sets up for your account. This took about five minutes to finish, and then you're presented with the desktop. Now, the first thing I did was go to control panel, make sure the network is set up correctly and connected to 10 gigabit. Now, because I don't have anything set up, I went to Storage Manager. This is where I'm going to set up my RAID configuration. It's going to give you a bunch of tips on how to create a storage pool and a volume that you'll actually be able to use. As you can see, all my drives are showing. Oddly enough, all my 16 terabyte drives are showing as 14.5, but you can also see the two NVMe M.2 drives as well. So there are a bunch of different RAID configurations to choose from. I'm not going to explain all of them, but under each option gives a brief description. I chose RAID 5 because that's typically what I go with. Now, the main reason for going with this is redundancy as well as speed. Now, the only issue is you lose out on one of your drives when you do this. So this right here is going to create a 43.6 terabyte NAS or storage pool. So you're going to choose format, type in your admin password, and it's going to create that new pool. Now, I've set mine up as a RAID 5 because it gives me some fault tolerance as well as decent speed and storage size. And this is how I've set up all my NASs in the past. And I've seen how firsthand how beneficial it is because I've actually had one or more drives fail on me in the past. And with RAID 5, you can take the old drive out that's faulty 
and replace it with a new one. And because of how it's all set up, it'll actually rebuild the array on the new drive and it'll act as if nothing happened. You won't lose any data. It's, it's so awesome. Now, if you remember, I put two M.2 MVME drives in for cache. And while it's creating the pool, I actually clicked on the three dots. It brings up some options. I chose SSD cache management. And then in here, you can select the volume you want to put the cache on. And I chose read and write, which is what I'd recommend if you plan on working off this, because that's gonna give you the best performance for whatever project you're working on. Otherwise, choose read. Now this is where it's gonna ask you what RAID you wanna do with the cache drives. It only allowed me to do RAID 1, which will mirror the two drives in case one fails, which is good. But instead of one terabyte of cache, I now only have 500 gigs of cache, or in this instance, around 450 gigs. And once you've done that, it'll create that RAID 1 cache. Now, while this is still working on optimizing, it took about two days to get full performance. I was still able to use this, so I was able to create a new folder. I'm choosing to make my main folder as the shared folder, but you can also choose personal or a user folder. And I give my account full user read and write access so that I can access it from anywhere. Now you don't have to use the file manager inside of the UG app. You can actually load it up in Finder. Under the network, you should find your drive. And then here you can type in your admin username and password and then hit connect. And it'll always connect to the NAS as if it was like a connected hard drive right to your computer. So back in the UG OS, there's a bunch of different apps in the App Center that you can install. I know a lot of people use Docker, but I'm not gonna go in depth on all the apps. There's lots in here. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you can actually install different operating systems on this unit as well, but I'm fine using the UG OS for now. I think one of the best features of the DXP4800 Plus is the remote access or multi-user support. I can access all my files remotely from anywhere. I can use my iPad, I can use my iPhone, um, whether I'm on location or at home, and the app is really intuitive. It's pretty similar to the browser UI I've already been showing. Theoretically, if I had an editor and I was out shooting a video, I could actually take the SD card out when I'm done the shoot, put it in an SD card reader on my phone and transfer it in 5G up to the NAS, and uh, it's, it's super quick, super fast, and the app supports a bunch of different preview files, so you can actually preview stuff back from the NAS on your phone if you wanted to through 5G. Now, I noticed that if I was trying to load 4K 60p 10-bit videos, uh, it would buffer a little bit, but the cool thing is they let you change the preview resolution, so if you wanna choose 720p or 1080p, you can do that, and then you won't have any buffering issues. So I have the Ugreen app open on the iPad and installed, and I wanna quickly show you what it's like to use. Over Wi-Fi, the NAS showed up for me, and I logged into it using my username and password. The app should be laid out similar to the desktop, but it does have some extra system info at the bottom. So I'd use this to transfer photos and videos if I wanted to edit them on the iPad. So I'm gonna to go to a shared folder that I already have on here with some images, and I'm gonna download maybe one of them. And as you can see, it's all set up pretty much like you'd see inside Finder. You can tap on your images for a preview. Now, one thing I noticed is that it previews it in a low res until you choose view original. And then from there, you're getting the full quality preview. I don't know if there's an option to change that, but that's how it's set up for me. Now, if you wanted to download to the iPad, you can just tap the download and save to a local album. It's gonna ask for access the first time. And then when it's done, it's gonna save that full quality image into your photo library. Now, if you wanted to save an image or a file from the iPad to your NAS, just go to the share icon, tap on the Ugreen icon, and in the lower left-hand corner, it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. So in there, you can choose your folder. In this case, I'm gonna to have to make my own folder because I didn't have one for this test. And then once you're done, hit confirm. And then from there, you can see the files uploaded to the NAS and you're previewing it back on the iPad. I wanna do a couple of speed tests here just to show you how fast this is. I'm gonna take a 7.5 gig file, transfer it to the NAS, and then I'll also show you what it's like if I was to upload that to Google Drive. Um, I have 1.5 gig internet. Now it's 1.5 down and one up. So it won't be nearly this fast, but I'm just kind of prove the point that like having a NAS as a local cloud storage might be a better solution than Google Drive. I'll, I'll do a stopwatch. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. And it finished. So 22 seconds to transfer a 7.5 gig file. Now, if I was to upload that to Google Drive, let's see what the speed's like. About to transfer in three, two, one, go. So we're quarter of the way done and we've already passed how fast it would be to upload to the NAS. I'm not gonna continue this because this is probably gonna take over a minute. All right, so I wanna show you how you can edit off the NAS and I have a full DaVinci Resolve project in here. So I'm gonna open this up. 
and as you can see, everything's loading in like it would typically off a normal SSD or a normal hard drive. And scrubbing the timeline, pretty smooth playback, no drop frames, we're at 24 frames per second. And this is playing back at full resolution, so this is 4K. No problems there. This is typically the type of performance I'd get off of an SSD, to be honest. All right, just to give you the actual speed that's coming off this thing, um, I'm gonna go to Blackmagic Speed Test. We'll just do it right on this folder and hit start. So it's, it's pretty fast at read speed. We're getting around 660 write and around 1,000 to 1,076 read. So anyway, that's pretty fast. That's over 10 gig network and we're getting basically what a 10 gigabit per second SSD would give you. Actually, I have one right here. And I know the write speed will be a little bit faster. Not by much. Honestly, the read speed is even slower than my NAS. And this is a drive I work off all the time. So clearly I could work off the NAS. All right, final thoughts for professionals. This is a no brainer. You have to have storage and you need something like a reliable NAS to back up your files. Or even if you wanna work off it, you can do that too. Um, I'd recommend working off of this versus a bunch of different drives. This streamlines the process, it cleans up your desk, gives you some redundancy if one drive fails. And uh, like I said, you have multi-user access so you can send links to clients if you want them to download files right off your NAS. So you don't need to upload to a cloud anymore. You basically have your own local cloud storage with this unit. Now, I know a lot of you probably don't have 10 gig networks and neither did I actually, but I just picked up a really cheap 10 gig switch for like hundred bucks. Um, I connected that to my router for the internet and then I connected my NAS to one of the 10 gig ports and then my Mac Studio to the other 10 gig port. And I didn't even have to do any configuration. It just worked right out of the box and the speeds are pretty impressive. Like I, like I showed you, you can edit directly off it. So that's really good. Now it does have some AI features. It has an AI album assistant manager so it can help you search for your photos easier. Um, the cool thing is it has recognition and classifications. Uh, you can search photos just by typing in what you're looking for. So if you wanna look for a camera, it'll hunt through it all and find all your images that are cameras. Just helps a little bit when it comes to search. It also supports a lot of different RAW formats for mainstream cameras in the photo album, as well as different video formats. And this is really helpful when it comes to previewing photos and videos shot from various devices. Overall, this is a really nice solid unit and they're giving you a lot for the price and also having the ability to connect external storage to it if you want to for file transfers, as well as add extra NVMe drives into the bottom of the unit for caching. It's also a really nice touch and also being able to update the RAM. Now, if I were to give it one negative, uh, it would be the SD card reader. It's not UHS-2. So you're not gonna get the full UHS-2 transfer speeds from your cards. Um, it's not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice to have. And outside of that, it's a really solid unit. I'll potentially do a follow-up uh, in maybe six months to a year to see how things have been running because I've only had this thing up for two weeks. Anyway, World Backup Day is coming soon and Ugreen is offering 20% off to you guys for a limited time. So make sure to check the link in the description to find out more. Also, let me know in the comments what you're using. Are you using a NAS? Do you work off SSDs? What's your workflow like? And uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and see you guys in the next one.